the Assassin's Cow combination blow build is one of the best builds in Destiny history. A few seasons back, this was used to solo every GM in the seasonal lineup with ease, and I even brought this into GM speedruns myself, which made things far too easy. It was broken and got nerfed, so in this video, I'm going to be going over the best current setup for endgame content that's going to make everything other than speeding through GMs feel like a walk in the park. With the mod rework in Lightfall, this build now has better healing than it ever did before, it still has access to limitless ad clear through Jolt, and still does massive amounts of damage to Majors, Ultras, Champions, and mini bosses. Just to show off the scaling, our base melee hits here for 10,000 damage, and we can instantly double this when combining it with 1-2 punch. Then with combination blow times 3, this gives us an extra 60% per stack, which brings us up to 8 times our original damage, where we're hitting for 83,000. But as you can see, the jolt we deal is also going to almost double our damage here. Across 2 melees, this is going to add another 100,000 damage. Plus, we can gain an extra 30% through Tractor Cannon, increasing our base melee damage across two punches by over 1200%. So even with some slight nerfs, this build still hits crazy hard, allowing you to one-hit or two-hit kill pretty much everything in the game, other than GM champions and bosses. You're going to want the right subclass layout on with the build, along with the best mods too, both of which I will be going over, so let's hop into that right now. First things first, if you guys aren't subbed already, sub. It's literally free. That said, for your super, make sure you're running Gathering Storm. I shouldn't really need to explain why this is better, it's just instant cast and does way more damage than Arc Staff. After this, you're going to want to make sure you're on Gambler's Dodge. Dodging your enemies with this equipped will instantly refund our full melee ability. And then with that, you're also going to want to be on Combination Blow. With Combination Blow, anytime we get a defeat, we're going to get a stacking increase in melee damage by 60%. And that's also going to instantly refresh our dodge ability, meaning we can dodge, melee, dodge, melee infinitely. After this, Pulse Grenades are going to be the best grenade you can run. Storm Grenades are still pretty strong on their own but they don't instantly apply Jolt to enemies, and we're mainly going to be using this to apply Jolt so we can stun things like Overload Champions. First up for our aspects, we have on Lethal Current. With this, anytime we do a dodge, the next melee attack we follow up with is going to Jolt enemies. As I already showed, the Jolt does a ton of extra damage for this combination, so you absolutely want to make sure you have this on. And on top of this, damaging any Jolted enemies with a melee attack will also blind them, which means we now have access to stunning Unstop Champions. With this, we also have on Flow State, which now allows us to become Amplified when defeating Jolted targets. And then while Amplified, we also get way quicker ability cooldowns for our dodge, and while dodging, we get a massive increase in damage resistance. Fragment-wise, Spark of Resistance will offer us 25% more damage resistance whenever we are are surrounded by combatants and this does have a slight lingering effect. Spark of Shock now allows our arc grenades to jolt targets. This is mainly for extra damage and then also for stunning overload champs. I also decided to pair this with the new Fragment Spark of Instinct. With this, anytime we become critical, a wave of jolt goes out, damaging enemies, which should help with getting our initial stacks up to times 3. And then lastly, Spark of Feedback is going to give us a 75% increase in our melee damage right after we get meleeed so that we can follow up with a super strong hit. I don't think this comes into play too much, however, there wasn't really anything else that I thought added to this build. On screen now is the full mod setup. If you guys want to copy this or take a screenshot and then apply them as I cover everything, I'll be explaining what each mod does and how it fits into the build. First things first, for your exotic, you want to make sure you have on Assassin's Cal as your helmet. This is going to allow powered melee final blows to grant invisibility and also restore a portion of our health and shields depending on the tier of the enemy we kill. With this build, as you've seen, we're spamming dodges and melees, so we have hands on and dynamo so that we get further super energy gains anytime we dodge near enemies or just land any melee kill. I did also opt for Ashes to Assets, just so that if we do end up getting any grenade final blows or grenade kills through the jolt that we're applying through our grenades, we also get energy here too. Heavy Handed on our Gauntlets is going to allow us to now spawn in Orbs of Power when we get melee final blows. Impact Induction will then reduce our grenade cooldown anytime we just deal flat damage with our base melee or our charged melee ability. And then I am also running Void Dexterity, just so that I can swap to Tractor Cannon, which I use as my main debuff source with this build quicker. On my chest piece, as always, I just have stat increase mods and then some DR mods so that I can play endgame content without taking as much damage. I've seen other people start to run emergency reinforcement. I think this only offers like 10% damage resistance and is trash, so make sure not to run this. 
Moving on to our leg armor, recuperation is just going to give us healing whenever we pick up orbs of power. And then I also have innervation, so we get even more grenade cooldown when picking up orbs as well. Lastly, on our legs, stacks on stacks is just going to double the amount of armor charges we gain each time. We're only really going to be gaining through picking up orbs of power. So now instead of getting one armor charge per orb, we're getting two instead. On my class item, I am running one copy of Bomber, so that now anytime we use our class ability, which happens all the time, we get a percentage of our grenade straight back. Proximity Ward is somewhat useful in situations where you're about to die and you don't have time to get a melee kill off, but you still want the healing and the invis through Assassin's Cowl. Proximity Ward is going to allow you to get a finisher and prevent you from getting killed depending on how low your health is. Lastly, since we're relying heavily on a one-two punch special shotgun, anytime we need ammo, we can use special finisher to generate this ammo so that we never run out. Okay, just to end the video off, we're back in the Legend campaign. I just cast my super there to show you how quickly we get super to regen. We come into this first room, and I'm just going to build up my stacks on these guys. Even if they weren't here, it, it's still pretty easy to build your stacks. The only thing you have to watch out for, as you just saw there, is your jolt killing too many enemies as you go in for a kill. Because a lot of times, when you're not stacked up high enough, you're not getting that full damage threshold yet. And the jolt is what's actually killing, and it won't build your stacks. So just like that... We send the boss away, spam dodge, and spam our melees, and you're going to see I'm getting huge chunks of super energy returned, just like that, because I'm getting melee kills and I have hands-on equipped. We also have dynamo, so whenever I dodge near an enemy, I'm also getting super, so we should get a tiny chunk right there. Melee kill, get a smaller chunk as well, and then we just keep chaining that back. We also have these orbs of power on the ground, so as you're going to see, even though I'm taking damage, I can pick one of these up and refresh my health that way, along with the healing that we get through Assassin's Cowl and the Invis, so that we can just adjust, sit back, and recover if we need to. Going into this room, I don't have my stacks built up. I let them run off just so that I could show you can build them pretty easily. I'm going to cast Super against the boss and hope that it doesn't run over all my adds. And then here, I'm just picking the guys without the shields. I get times one. I can pick like a Thrall for times two. That's going to jolt and kill a lot of things. And then there's an accolade for times three. It's basically going from times one to times three. That's hard. So at that times two value, it's kind of hard to get that stack to build up without jolt killing everything. But as you see here, we also use the super against boss. We almost have super back. We'll definitely have super back going into the third and final room. And the build's super casual to play with. Coming into the third and final room, I'll just cast super like that. I'll let my stacks run out one more time. I'll just apply a debuff to this guy. Go for this guy because he doesn't have an overshield. I probably won't get this guy because he'll die to Jolt. But you can see this guy gets weakened, Assassin's Cal procs, I have orbs to heal off of, and I can go for this like straggler here. So right like that, we're already at times three, and I can just start destroying once again. The adds are spawned, refresh combination blow. Now Jolt's gonna take an effect, start chain killing adds like that. The knight should die. Dodge one more time. This should kill pretty much the rest of the adds. And then just like this, the boss dies. Super, super easy build to play with. Super great for content like this, in my opinion, where you're not going against champions, you're like 15 to 20 under, and you at least know the encounter and how it's going to go down. That is it for the build and the video. I still think this is one of the top three or top five builds that hunters have access to. Other things are going to be way more versatile and something to take into an encounter or a raid or a dungeon that you might be unfamiliar with, but this is definitely the best steamroll build in terms of ad clear and even dealing with majors and ultras too. I use a ton of these builds that I'm covering on YouTube over on my Twitch when we're doing high-end PvE activities like Lomans and even speedruns. So if you guys aren't following me over on Twitch already, a link to that and my Discord server will both be in the description below if you want to check that out. Anyways, that's all for this video. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.